Okay, welcome back to my backyard mechanics. Today I'm going to be putting on this timing chain. It's a uh, kind of a complex chain. Um, traditionally, like the Chevy 350s that I'm used to, you got your your cam. I'm sorry, your um, crankshaft sprocket, and then you got your uh, camshaft sprocket. But this one here has a idler sprocket, so therefore you got a camshaft sprocket and an idler sprocket, and these two connect through a chain. And then behind that, that, that idler sprocket, it has two more gears um, behind it, and it goes one goes off this way, and one goes off this way, which is your right and left side of the head. So. Um, I got my chain guys in right now. They're just kind of, they're not in there tight. But what you want to do is you want to make sure you they line up. You see, you want to make sure they line up. They're not offset by anything. Um, you know, you want to make sure they're, they're matching up with the other one flush. So that way when the chain rides it, it rides right, you know. Um, and the next step is to uh, uh, always check your stuff. Like, uh, check your parts that you're fixing to put in. Um, so, I did check these with the um, other chain guys. And they look good. Um, but I want to show you about the uh, the gears that I got with it. Alright, so let me show you that real quick. Welcome back to My Backyard Mechanics. 2002 Dodge Ram 4.7. All right, so I bought a new timing chain uh, set. Actually, the whole set came with the gears, the chain, the guys, the tensioners. Okay, so everything looked great. Um, you always want to match up part for part. Um, so what I came to realize that I did match up everything, except for I wasn't happy with this and this. Okay. So by the way, this is this goes on the end of your camshafts. Let me put them back for you real quick so I can explain. Okay, so this goes off your crankshaft. All right, it's just like that. The dot goes down. This is your idler pulley, um, idler sprocket rather. It goes in the middle. There's a big shaft that comes out, and um, yeah, all it does is just spin, and it connects. Let's see, look back here. See how there's two more gears back there? They shoot out and spin out. One goes this way, and one goes that way. It makes like a Y. Okay, literally, like a Y comes up and goes out both ways. <clears throat> all right, so. This goes your crankshaft. This is your idler sprocket. Sits in the middle, just floats there. Okay. And these go to your camshaft. Very simple. They got a slot, you know. So you really can't get those wrong. One bolt, line up the slot, whatever. You put these on. Alright, so um, now I matched up everything and it all looked great. The only problem was is that I match up. The old one right there with the new one. Okay, and as you can see, I got two holes lined up. Okay, even if they're off just a tad, but they're not. So they are lined up real good. So I'm gonna grab it and look at this. See that? If I was to use that one right there, this thing will not fire. So this is how you want to match things up. Um, the cam sensor comes in at an angle like this. And as this thing is spinning, actually it spins clockwise, as it's spinning, it reads these notches here. So whenever um, it sees those notches there, um, it, it tells the computer what to do. Um, you know, same as here. It, it just reads all. It's a magnetic sensor. So, therefore, um, if I was to use this one here, this thing would not fire. So, you always want to check your stuff. 
Um, I'm glad I did check. So, like I said, I bought the whole kit. The only thing I'm not going to be using is these gears. Because I want to, you know, even though they all match up, I'm just going to go ahead and use my old gears. And um, because that's what came off of it. And I cleaned them up. And they look, they look pretty good. I mean, it's got a little focus there. It's got a little tiny wear mark, but they ain't nothing. They're just light, you know? So, um, I know it'll work. It was on there before running. And I just don't want to take a chance of uh, mixed matching tools, or parts, I should say. So, this is this one here. That's the uh, driver's side. It all matches up. But... I'm just not, just not happy. And also, when I um, when I put this idler sprocket on the shaft, it uh, it had a little bit of play. Um, the old one, you know, when I put it on the shaft, it didn't. So that's another reason I'm not using the gears. So. I'm gonna put this thing together. It's very important to match up your uh, parts before you install. But like I said, I'm gonna put this thing together without the gears. The old gears work fine, so I'm just gonna be using new chain, new guides, and new um, chain tensor. Oh well. Like this video, subscribe, please. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Alright, so this is your idler sprocket. This is the front side. Um, they got those slots in there for a reason. That dot right there has got to be at 12 o'clock. Okay, so um, what you do next is um, you see back here, you got this is the passenger side. This is going to go up to the passenger side head and hooks onto the passenger side can shaft. Alright, so this is the driver side. This is going to go up to the driver's side head and it's going to hook up to the camshaft uh, sprocket. So, um, they have these holes here for a reason. Uh, what you're going to do is, you got three different chains. Okay. So, you got three different chains. The two long ones are the ones that are going to go behind the idler sprocket. This is going to go around the front. Okay, so again, now you see these two chain leads right there, they're dark. And what that means is that they're going to have to show through that slot right here. All right, once you see both of them in that slot, that's how you know you're good. All right, and so um, people use rubber bands to hold them back there. Um, people use these right here. I'm going to end up using these, um, you know, because... All you gotta do is take a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver behind it, and just pop them off. So, these here are okay. Um, screwdriver just won't exactly break them. Um, you have to get something to pull and break them, and then hopefully nothing falls down into your motor. Uh, well, the bottom of your oil pan, and you're fishing for it. <coughs> okay, so, I'm gonna get this thing together, and I'm gonna show you what to look for. Um, okay, so... Um, like I said, you want this at your 12 o'clock, all right, and you're going to put on the, uh, the, the passenger side uh, chain on first, and you're going to want it to see it on this side right here, okay, I'm going to show you what that looks like, and then I'll do the driver's side chain, and you'll be able to see the two timing marks here. You want to do the back one first, because once you put on the um, driver's side chain, you're not going to be able to really see the um the passenger side chain so that's why it's a little bit compl complicated all right so um let me get that together and i'll show you what it looks like all right passenger side chain is on let's see you can barely tell the difference but those two different colored links they're showing through that window okay and this is 12 o'clock so you want them to show right down there at the bottom. And this is how I got it zip tied. 
together. So when I go to slide this thing in there, I'm not fighting it. All right. Um, let me get the other side on, and I'll show you what it looks like after that one. And like I said, once you get the other chain on, you're not going to be able to see those two links in there no more. Uh, the video is kind of different than actual doing it. Once you get it, and then you can see it, you'll know for a fact that you got it in there and right. But that's the main goal. Get those two dark, uh, different colored links seeing through those windows. Alright? Okay, driver side chain is on. Now, as you can see, I wish this had a better light. Let me see if I can mess with the light button. Alright, right there. You can kind of see right there, those two different colored links are showing through that window. And let me show you again. On the other side you cannot be able to see the other chain so that's why it's important to get it right the first time all right um, so that's what it's going to look like you know they're on they're not going to move off um you want your um these um zip ties at the one o'clock and eleven o'clock position because they're going to sling out that way if you put them if you put them down here and then you're trying to get the chain up it's just gonna you're not gonna have enough room slack for the chain all right so um that's that's a trick part to it um to get this part up in there without having too much trouble uh play without it coming loose on you um and so that's what you're gonna do and then the next part here is you got this part let me put you down for a second Okay, it's just a second. <laughs> so there's your crankshaft sprocket, and you can see that dot lines up with that uh, darker link timing, uh, time chain link, I guess. And then up there, you got two, but that you're gonna set them kind of straddle over that timing mark. All right. Um, before you go to put this in, put some of that uh, ultra slick engine and stimuli lube so that way it doesn't dry start okay so you put that in and then you slide it in um, let me go do that right now and then I'll show you, how to show you what that looks like all right I already put the lube on it on it as well um, this is where your idler sprocket is going to sit on here get back up a little bit this is where your idler sprocket is going to sit on and this is your crankshaft so this is where your crankshaft sprocket is going to sit on. Alright, so it's going to be kind of tricky. I'm by myself, so I really can't hold everything together and show you how to put it like in. Um, but I will get it in. So, um, again, you want to put some of that assembly lube on the crankshaft and on the um, idler sprocket shaft. Um, this doesn't move, it just sits there, you know, it's not gonna, you know, it's cranked to the block, but it doesn't, doesn't spin or anything else. Crankshaft, obviously we know it spins. Um, so, uh, you're gonna end up putting that, uh, crankshaft sprocket that I showed you. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, the crankshaft sprocket and the idler sprocket. You're gonna have those chains feeding going, one going up this way, one going up the other way. And then you're going to, um, have the, uh, the third chain, the short chain connecting two together that I just showed you, and then you're gonna just kind of slide everything together. It's gonna be tricky, pain in the butt, but um, you'll get it, man. So don't, don't, don't stress. All right, guys, I got it in. <clears throat> um, I did take off this uh, this uh, chain guide right here. It was just kept falling. And it was kind of in my way, but I got it in. Um, I got it looped around that one. And this one right here, the changes, it wouldn't make it over here because I didn't put this at uh, 12 o'clock. I mean, at uh, 1 o'clock. It's darn near 12 o'clock. So you got to bring it over a little bit more, like so. And then you can just loop it around that. All right, so the next step is to uh, put your can sprockets on. Um, so this is going to involve a little bit of a trick. Uh, you want to get everything ready. You want to get your bolts ready. You want to get your sprocket ready. And then... Um, you're gonna end up cutting that off and before you cut that off you're gonna keep tension on this alright keep tension on it so you don't lose your timing 
and then uh, you're gonna simply put that black dot right over I mean that black the black uh, mark right here the different chain different color link you're gonna put it right over this um, mark right here um, so we know this is the driver's side um, it's easy to determine because it's got the uh, cam sensor um, sprocket on it so then we gotta put that on that side your cam sensor goes right here in this hole so we know it goes on this side the other side is just a gear it's just a gear okay so there's nothing on the back of it so that, that is the next step it went on okay other than that taint that uh chain guy was in my way so i just moved it out the way for right now all right uh, so then uh so you can still see it's still on the mark oh it's still on the mark down there okay so that's what it's supposed to look like and then uh now i'm gonna get these on on that dot of the can bracket all right so that's that part uh let me get that on i'll show you what it looks like okay everything's on now um like i said passenger side see how it's got that r that's where you want to get that timing dot you want to get that timing chain with a different color link right on it okay that's how you know you're good v8 sitting up at the top okay now back to the side same thing the l that's where it's got the dot and you want to get the different color link the timing chain link right on that dot okay so that's how you know you're good v8 sitting at 12 o'clock just like the other side um this right here the two different color links are sitting uh, right over the uh, dot of the idler sprocket. And that thing is um, <clears throat> sitting at 12 o'clock as well. Okay, so you can see inside here with the light, I got it on there. The two different color links, they're showing right through the window. So you can see that's right. And uh, let's see if I can get this one in there. I thought I had a little bit of light in there. There we go, right there. All right, you can see one half of the link. Uh, well, you can see the whole link, but you can barely see the other link, and it's showing right through the middle of that window. So that's how you know that's good. And on the bottom of the crankshaft sprocket, that sits at six o'clock, and a different color link is sitting right on it. So that's how you know everything is good. All right, and so I haven't torqued anything down yet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get I'm gonna just kind of clean those up a little bit and put the chain tensioners on and then I'll put my other chain guide on as well uh, torque everything down the specs according to your book all right so I'm thinking uh, these right here these are the um, chain tensioner pivot arm this bolt right here is uh, 22 same with this one okay that one's at 22 um and foot pounds by the way and these right here let me show you these right here these are stationary okay they don't move that this 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 um chain tensioner does not move um these go down to 21 foot pounds that's 21 foot pounds okay and that one's 21 foot pounds and the one in here is 21 foot pounds okay and so then uh, you got your chain tensioners um, and they're gonna go on uh, let's see here chain tensioners they're at 21 as well so when you put your time and chain tensioners on they go on 21 foot pounds so basically everything is at 21, 22 foot pounds. So make it life easy, make everything at 22, right? I don't know. That's what I'm gonna do anyways. Put everything at 22. So and then uh, after that uh, we get to 
turn this thing and make sure everything lines up. And that's the reason why you don't want to put the rocker's arms yet, because you want to be able to turn your your cam. You can't do it without the uh, rocker arms being off. I mean, you can, but then you're pushing valves, and and then um, you could uh, push valve against the piston, and then you ain't turning nothing. So you don't want to have no interfering. You don't want nothing messing with you while you're trying to put this thing together. So the best part is just take them off before you even put them on. So, um, and then uh, when you go to turn it, make sure everything lines up. You want to uh, do it without the rocker arms on. And then make sure everything's good. If that's good, then uh, you put all your rocker's arm on and then spin it around again. And if it stops on you, that means... I'm that means that you're hitting valve the piston somewhere. Stop and figure out what the heck you did wrong. All right, so be back with after I uh, torque them down and I'll start spinning this thing. Okay, got everything all torqued down, tightened down. Um, just go over the torque numbers with you before we start turning this thing over, and also checking the um, uh, timing verification <clears throat> before we start turning it over so uh, I tighten down all these uh, hydraulic tensioners um, tighten them down 22 these two here at 22 tighten them down at 22 uh, tighten those down as well at 22 okay um, uh, I tighten them pretty much everything down to 22. They vary from 21 to 22, so uh, I didn't think a one would make a difference. Um, this one here was 25, so I torqued that down to 25. Um, now on these here, don't forget to put thread lockers on these because they don't have no, uh, um, I guess like a washer or like a head bolt, regular head bolt. They just kind of just sit there. Um, so that the way your your tensioner it pivots on that thing, so um, doesn't really lock into place. So you want it to be kind of free and pivot off of this bolt right here. So this bolt you don't want it to rattle out. So that's why they tell you to put um thread locker on these. Okay, um, and these right here, these bolts are 90 foot pounds. They're kind of high, but that's what they want. That's what it says in the book. So. Um, and then that's that. All right, so that's tightening them up. Um, let's tighten them all up to torque. Um, now let's check our dots and and uh, timing marks and V8s and what have you. Okay, so you can see the different color chain leak right over that dot. V8 standing straight up. So we got that. That's the passenger side. Let's get. Let's look at the driver's side again. This is the um, driver's side, different color chain link over that dot, and the VA standing straight up. All right, so you got your idler sprocket, that dot right there. It's, okay, it's standing straight up. The different color links, the straddling right over. There's two different, there's two of them, so you want to put it right in the center. So uh, I, I'm going to say straddle over that dot. The one on the bottom. Six o'clock. There's only going to be one different color chain lead, so you want it right over that dot. Okay. Now you can be able to see those two different color chain lead. They got to be centered inside that uh, hole right there. Now this one here, can't see it anymore, but since it's new, you can see that the uh, the chain link is in there, and you can barely no, you can't. But the other one is down and right behind that chain. So that's why it's very important to get that passenger side chain on and right uh, the very first time. So let me get set up and I will start turning this bad boy. Um, again, rocker arms are not in place. Uh, you just want to turn it and make sure everything lines up first. And then you can uh, put the rocker's arm, put them on, and then uh, turn it again. And if it stops on you, like I said, it's done something wrong. But nothing should go wrong. Everything's timed correctly. So let me get uh, let me get set up for that. Okay, I got an assistant holding me, holding the phone for me. Finally. Anyways, 
uh, I've already spun it around a couple times to make sure that I knew what I was talking about. So here's what happens. Okay, so oh, this is your V8. All right, your left side is over here. So make sure your V8 is at 12 o'clock position. Your V8 again, this is here. Make sure it's at 12 o'clock position. And your um, timing timing dial here in a big cam, uh, big uh, idler sprocket. Make sure it's at 12 o'clock position. And right down here, make sure that dot is at the six o'clock position. And what you want to do is you want to spin it. And I hold it back. All right. So now when you spin the whole thing, this is the reason why you don't have the rocker's arm in and you don't have no spark plugs in because you want to be able to turn this engine without no problem so now we're going to turn it all right and then what you want to do is you want to get that idler sprocket you want to get it back to that dot where it's pointing that 12 o'clock position again all right so come in geez we're at back at 12 o'clock the V8 is at 12 o'clock. This V8 is at 12 o'clock. And this is at the 6 o'clock position. So you want to spin it around four or five times like that. I did it. Um, probably, I say, this this time I'm doing it. Uh, maybe the fifth time. So this will keep doing it. You know? All right, I got it again. That 12 o'clock position, correct. That's at 12 o'clock position, which is correct. And this is at 12 o'clock position, which is correct. Okay, now this dot down here, this timing dot down here, it is at the six o'clock position. So like I said, you wanna keep doing that until you know you get them dots lined up and your VAs lined up. And uh, make sure you do it. Uh, keep spinning and spinning and spinning. So now the next step is to put your rocker's arms on it and then uh, spin it around again like I just showed you. So that way uh, you do this part, you kind of figure out, okay, everything looks good. Now you skip to the next step, get the rocker's arm on, and then uh, try it again. Because now if you put the rocker's arm and then it stops all of a sudden, you lock, you're going to, it, it, the um, valves are going to hit the pistons. So that's why you want to do this step first, then you do the rocker arm, then you do this again, which turn the motor around and make sure you do it uh, to check to see if any rockers, I mean, I'm sorry, any valves going to hit the pistons. And then, um, and then you should be good to go. You just put it all back together. So uh, this has been fun. I'm almost done. Uh, it's all downhill work now. So make sure you turn it clockwise, not counterclockwise. You do not want to spin this motor counterclockwise. I do not know why, but everybody says not to, even the book. So, yeah. So let's have fun and uh, I'll get the rocker's arm on and then we'll spin it again. All right. Thank you. All right. Last one to remind you don't forget to add some of this ultra slick engine assembly lube. Um, put it on the contact points one and two and then uh, I'm gonna put it on the, on the cam lobes and then when I spin it around it'll it'll lube it up for me uh, I've also done these guys here you know you can see come on focus so yeah you, you want to do it like that too now put them in there and spin them around like so I can't see it, but spin it around like so. Make sure you put some on there too. Uh, reason being is, uh, you know, you're gonna put oil in and start it up, but it's gonna make several revolutions before the oil even gets up here. So you want to make sure that it has a chance to survive without oil, and that's what that stuff is for. The ultra slick engine assembly loop. All right, so make sure you put that on. A, on everything really so don't be afraid put it on there all right it's like seven bucks for it but it's worth it um let's see uh yeah the rocker arms um they're going on let me see if i can't uh show you how to do it somehow with the phone set up hmm.
great battery dying. All right, so I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see. Let me see here. Uh, I'll probably be able to get some of it. All right, so um, this one, the cam lobe is up. Well, up enough, anyways. Stick that right between there. I'm gonna do this one here because I already got the rocker arm looped up. All right, you want to put light tension on it. Put your ratchet on it. All right, put your light tension on it. You got it down, and then you push it down. Whoa! Shit! What the hell was that? Okay. Put that down on it so. And that's it. Just like that. Get the other one going real quick. All right. Make sure you put the little dot on there. A little dot on there. You know. Set it down. Get your tool ready. Set it up underneath it. Like so. Make sure you're up underneath the cam lobe. All right. And then you just slide and push down. Slide it in. And then that's it. Slowly release it. So you do that to all of them. Alright, I gotta go charge my phone. So that's basically the idea. I already got those two on that quick, that easy. You see? Alright. I'm gonna go charge my phone. All right, so I've attached all my rocker arms. Um, I, I um, oil lube, um, put a oil, ah, excuse me, engine assembly lube and all this. And so when I spin it, you know, it all looks good. I'm not gonna show you the timing marks and uh, V8s and all that stuff, but this is your goal. You wanna be able to spin this thing around. All right, so you keep spinning it around. And you can see that it hasn't stopped me. There's no force or nothing. And that's what you want. So now you know when you crank this thing over and it starts up, that it'll be fine and nothing will hit. Because we all know this is an interfering motor. Which means if you get something wrong, you're going to hit valves with the pistons. And the next thing you know, you're taking it apart all over again. And this time with more damage, more issues, more money, more time. So, because I know this video is long, but I take the time to show you every little thing. So, and that's it. I mean, I spun this thing around two times already. I'll spin it around some more. As you can see, we are good to go. And now, the rest of this stuff, the rest of this stuff is uh, all downhill. So, uh, so it's been fun. Uh, so I might do a little, another couple little videos, but pretty much you just gotta put on your valve covers, your intake, your injector, your injectors. But you put that on with your fuel rail, then you put that all in there at one time. Uh, your spark plugs. Um, and then your uh, coil pack, and then you're gonna have to put on a whole floor of this. So, first things first is the uh, timing chain cover, and then after that, your harmonic balancer, and after that, then you just start hooking up your attachments. Your oil neck filler goes over here, your air compressor is gonna go right here, your alternator is gonna go right here, your power steering pump is gonna go right here. Um, don't worry about that oil filter, I, I will change it out. I just didn't feel like having to open it while uh, I was working this off. So basically this is it for the timing part. Uh, the timing is the most crucial thing of this motor. You want to make sure you get it right. But I can say it honestly looks good, feels good, nice and tight. Um, everything's spinning good. So that's how you do it. Uh, 
You take it to the shop, you know, of course, they're going to do some long lines of the same things as what I just did, but I, I can't afford to take it to the shop, so I just do it in my backyard, or really on the side. But anyways, I do it in my backyard so I can help another backyard guy do his job, uh, his 4.7, whether it be in a Jeep, uh, Durango, or Dodge Ram, you know, they all have 4.7s as well. So, they're almost all the same, except for the Rams, you got a lot more room to work with. So, thank you for watching this long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, question, comments, anything, uh, will be, uh, you know, viewed and accepted, you know. I'll take criticism. Um, just don't be sarcastic. So, <laughs> I'm just a backyard guy trying to fix my own motor. Alright, guys. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe.